Today I'm so excited to show you our new monster bib patterns and we have our little boy monster bib with the optional chin and here's our little girl with another optional chin and I have a couple other samples another little boy pattern and there's no chin at all on this one and here's another little boy pattern and again no chin so let's talk a little bit about what we need to do to make these first of all you're going to want to go and print up or use the provided pattern for the chins and the arm and the bib front and if you're printing them up I would like you to take notice of the scale it says one inch to set your printer to print the actual size and compare this to the one inch before cutting your patterns so this is important if you're using the patterns provided on the CD if you're using the ones obviously that we've given you in the pattern you're good to go you might want to make some photocopies so you have an extra one so you basically want to follow the instructions on all these we have one for the chin which is optional we have one for the arm and then we have another one for the bib front and basically you will cut according to the directions some anti soft and stable which is a wonderful pliable fabric it's great for the inside of these bibs and you will cut some uh, fusible webbing and then your fabric and just follow the instructions to prepare your pieces so I have my pieces ready to go here's my chin pattern this is the outside of my chin and the inside will be pink and it will be placed onto my bib front so it will be like this and the inside of the little mouth will be pink this will be a little girl design here's my arm and I've opted to have what I'm using for the lining of my bib to be on the front of my arm so we're ready to get started So today I will be making um, the file name Monster Face Girl 3 and I'm going to add a chin to it so I will use the file name Monster Chin or it's MCA Girl it stands for Monster Chin Arm Girl. My hoop is a 9 inch hoop so it will fit both the chin and the arm in the same hoop and we've hooped up our fabric like water soluble stabilizer. If you have a smaller hoop, we've broken these files out separately to fit into an 8 inch hoop. So you'll choose the monster chin separately. It is, it's at an angle, but it'll fit in your hoop. And then you can choose the arm for either the boy or the girl. So the threads we will need today will be our embroidery bobbin threads, so just a pre wound bobbin. We will need some water soluble thread. We will need a thread for the pacifier holder. There's a little hole in the chin for the, to hold the pacifier. Plus you'll need a bobbin to go with it. You'll need a lip color thread and of course it's a girl so we'll do hot pink. And I'm going to use the same thread to stitch around the outside edges of my pieces. So that would be my arm and bib color thread. I'm going to use the same gray to make my buttonholes in my arm to have the adjustable uh, fitting of the arm around the baby's neck. And then also for my teeth and my eyeball color, I'm going to go with this pretty little mint green because I think it will show up cute on my printed fabric. And then my iris thread color, I'm going to go with the light pink. And then I will use the black for, um, for the eyeball and for the eyelashes. So we're ready to get started. For step number one, we need to place obviously our wash away fabric like stabilizer in our hoop and we're going to thread your machine with your arm and bib colored thread in the needle and our regular pre-wound bobbin thread in the bobbin and we stitch the placement stitch which is right here. So the next step would be to take our prepared chin and to spray the back of it with either temporary spray adhesive or I'm going to go ahead and use a glue pen. So actually I'll do the stabilizer. I'll just do a section of glue right around the edge and then I'm going to lean right over the top of it and place my design or place my prepared piece exactly within the stitching line. And then we press it down so it stays in place and a great way to check it is to pick it up and maybe hold it to the light in front of a window or something and check and be sure that your 
cut edge, especially at the lip line here, the smile line is exactly on your stitching line. If it isn't, go ahead and adjust it. So for step two, we will place water-soluble thread in the needle only and we'll let the machine tack down our chin and place on top the water-soluble stabilizer. So here's a close-up look at our step two with our water-soluble holding it down and you can see it's it's just on the edge, which is wonderful. And step three is our stipple color. I forgot to mention earlier, you will need a stipple colored thread to stipple your chin and your bib front. I'm going with the white because my print is kind of busy and I just sort of want it to blend in. It goes in the needle and the bobbin and we'll go ahead and stitch step three. Just completed step three with my stipple and for step four we're going to place our pacifier holder thread color in the needle and the bobbin and it's going to stitch a small eyelet, a small circle right here in the center of the bib for the pacifier holder. So now I'm ready to remove uh, the hoop from the machine and I'm going to cut across this hole like a pie all the way across in a few different areas and then I'll trim out that hole nice and tight. Nice sharp seam ripper. I'm not going all the way across because I don't want to cut through the stitching. But I put the point in right next to the stitching and just gently guide it toward the middle. So I'm sort of cutting it open, sort of pie shaped. I'm getting through all the layers. can see I've gotten through all the layers. So now that I've done that, I'll just take my hoop scissors, the bigger one, and start just trimming it right next to the stitching. And I'll complete that and I'll be right back. So I've cut out my pacifier holder and now I'm going to just take on the corner of my hoop here I'm just going to cut off a little piece of the water soluble stabilizer just a little scrap of it and I'm going to place it right directly over the pacifier hole So here's my eyelet ready to go and I'm just going to trim away some of the extra stabilizer. Get that out of the way. And our next step is step number six and it's to place our lip color thread in the needle in the bobbin and it will stitch the satin stitch at the top of the chin. So there's my finished chin. So we're ready to move on to the arm. 
and whether you do it in this file where they're together or you do it with the separate files, the steps are the same. So the first step for the arm is to stitch the placement stitch. And then the second step is to place the prepared arm. So I'm again going to use my glue pen and just trace around the outside edge to hold it in place. And then I'll very carefully place it within that stitching line. And a good tip is to then pick it up. I'm in front of my window right now. And I'm going to pick it up and look out my window from the back of my hoop. And then I can easily see where I need to adjust my placement. So I'll go ahead and do that and then we'll go on. So I've checked out my placement and I think it looks pretty good. So next is to put my arm and bib color thread in my needle and my bobbin. This takes quite a bit of bobbin thread so I would suggest you start with a pretty full bobbin before you get going. And we'll get that going and be right back. So here's a look at my last step where it actually tacked down the shape of your monster arm uh, right onto the water soluble stabilizer and you can see it's exactly in the right place. If it's not, this is the time to fix it because we, we want to make sure it's caught first of all so we catch our raw edge and we also want to make sure that we don't have any excess hanging out past the, sap, the zigzag so you have a nice tidy finish when we're done. But we're ready to go on to step number three for the little girl is to put our scallop thread in the needle in the bobbin and it will stitch scallops around the arm. This is what they'll look like when they're done. So it's cute little lace scallops all around the arm. And if you're not doing the little girl, your step three will be to place um, your your the thread that you're going to put around the arm and the bib and the needle and the bobbin. This one I use variegated which is really cute and then we'll stitch that and we'll be right back. So here's a look at our finished scallops, cute as can be. Next step is to take the arm and bib color thread and place it in the needle in the bobbin and it'll stitch the satin stitch around the outside edge of the arm. So we just finished our satin stitch around the edge. The last step for the arm is the adjustable buttonholes which will be stitched right here. So I'm going to put uh, the matching thread in the needle in the bobbin and get that stitched. So here I have my monster arm and my monster chin, chin all stitched up and ready to go. And I'm just going to cut away, not too close because I don't want to hit the stitching. I'm going to cut away the water soluble stabilizer. And that's stippled on the back so I'm going to leave that because that's too much to cut out. That'll wash away and the arm. Cut that nice and close. And this is a large piece of wash away stabilizer. I usually cut off the, the strangely shaped areas and I'll zigzag two of them together using wash away thread and I'll get another half a hooping out of that so it'll save you a little bit of money. Why waste it? So we cut this out. And now we're ready to go ahead and soak this in some warm water and rinse it a couple of times and then let it air dry and we'll make the face of the bib and apply the chin. So we're ready to do the bib front. So I've already stitched out step one onto my fabric-like wash-away stabilizer. So you can see the shape of my bib. Step two, I'll take my prepared bib. This is fabric already fused to uh, soft and stable on one side and cut out. And you can either use temporary spray adhesive 
or the glue pen. And the pen, I just need to go around the edges just to hold it on. And we'll position that directly over my stitching. And just like with the chin and, chin and the arm, I'll pick up my hoop and turn it over and I'll be able to look through and see how my positioning is. So we'll get this positioned correctly and then we'll put it on the machine and step two will be to zigzag the placement stitch and we're using our arm and bib color fabric in the needle in the bobbin. For step two, we will place our arm and bib colored thread in the needle only and we'll remain with embroidery bobbin thread in the bobbin. Step three is our stipple. So I will place our stipple thread in the needle only and the machine will stipple the face of the bib. Step four is next and it will stitch actually the teeth and the whites of the eyes, but I'm going to choose because after all she is a monster a real pretty mint green and it'll do the white of her eyes and a couple of teeth. Step 5 is next so we'll place our lip color in the needle only and it will stitch the lip. So step 6 is next and it will be the iris on uh, this is Monster Bib Girl 3 the iris in her eye and it will also be her eye patch. I was going to go with the light pink but I've changed my mind. I'm going to keep going with this dark pink because I think it'll look really cute with her lip color and the edge of the bib. So we'll move on. So step seven is next and we'll place black thread in the needle only and it'll stitch the detail around the eye and also her little eye patch strap. So step eight is next and you can see we've got the face of our cute little girl monster ready to go, the front of it. So this time we will place, turn our hoop over and we will place the backing of our bib over the back of the hoop and we'll put water soluble thread in the needle only and we'll go ahead and tack the back on. So here's the back of my hoop, the back of my bib basted on and I'm going to trim it very close around the edge, around the whole thing. We'll do that and be right back. So here's a look at the back of our bib, all trimmed and ready to go. The next step I'm going to do is to put the chin on the front of the bib. And you can skip that step if you choose. Uh, so we'll be right back to do that. So on your chin, there is a little stitching that shows you where the center is. And on your bib, it's there as well. It's in water soluble thread so it's a little harder to see but there is a little stitch line. So I'm going to line those two up and I'm going to keep my raw edges even and the machine is going to stitch a tack down to hold this center area right here. So just to show you where the needle is going to start, I'm going to lower my needle. It's going to go right at the edge of my tack down satin stitch of the bib. So that is where I want to put my chin. Right at that edge, just like that. So once I get that lined up, we'll hit the start button and we'll let it tack down. That's just the very center of my chin. And again, if you're not making the chin, you can skip this step. You can actually skip step 9, 10, and 11. So step 10, it will baste. It will baste the side of the chin on. So my job is to just sort of hold it in place. I'm going to slow the machine down as much as I can. And we'll just let it Keeping my edges even. I can stop it if I want because once I get up here I have to sort of, the chin cups out a little bit, so I have to sort of put it in place. And it's just barely skimming that zigzag. There we go. So that 
is step 10. So step 11 is to do the opposite side the same way. So the machine is nice and slow and my job is to just keep the zigzag edges lined up. And about when I get here is when I stop it because I just want to make sure I'm in the right place. So here you have a look at our little chin in the hoop. It does stick up a little bit and we're ready to move on to the next step. The next step for my little girl bib are the scallops around the edges so I'm going to put my scallop color thread in the needle and the bobbin and the machine will stitch the scallops all around the edge. So the last step of our adorable little monster bib is to put my arm and bib color thread in the needle and the bobbin and it will complete the satin stitch around the outside edge of her face. So here's my adorable complete little girl bib. This is number three and I'm just going to go ahead and cut out the bib around the water soluble stabilizer. Just get rid of as much as I can. And then I will go and rinse this, get rid of the excess stabilizer, and then it will be time for me to stitch my little arm on and my button, and she will be totally finished. So I have all the stabilizer rinsed out of my pieces and it's time to go ahead and stitch the arm to the bib front. And we're going to line up the satin stitch edge on the arm with the satin stitch edge on the bib front, basically overlap them. So we're going to be stitching right along here. So I'm going to overlap them. I have pink thread in the needle and the bobbin. And I like to start kind of in the middle lowering the needle exactly where my edge of my sit satin stitch is. And if I start in the middle, I can get some traction. And we'll stitch to the end. Then I'll pick it up and turn it around. And then stitch to the other end. Turning it around for me is easier than trying to reverse straight. That never works. And I'll go back and forth three or four times. I'll do a little backpack here. Cut my thread. And there you can see the arm is stitched on and how we do in the back. Looks pretty good. We just have a couple threads to clip. And next we'll come back and we'll put our buttons on. Almost done with our adorable little bib. We need to cut open our buttonholes. And I don't know if you've ever used one of these buttonhole cutters. I used to sew a lot of clothing back when I had more time. Um, and I tried this buttonhole cutter on my bib and I it was a little difficult because this is so spongy from the soft and stable that it just didn't let me get a nice clean cut and I ended up cutting some of my threads so I found a better way this also works well I'll take a pin and I'll put it across the end of my buttonhole and a nice sharp seam ripper put it in the opposite end and push my seam ripper toward the pin between the stitching. The pin acts as a as a like a stop so you don't accidentally go too far and cut right through the whole thing. Now of course I didn't get all the way to the end so I'll just turn it around and put it in the opposite end and just get that little extra bit so we have a nice clean cut without cutting your stitches. So one more to go
other side. So now I have all three of my buttonholes cut open. And this is so we can have an adjustable size to fit around your baby's neck. So the next step is to sew the button on. And I love sewing my buttons on by machine normally. But on this one, I decided to go by hand because I want to make a nice, strong uh, button stitch. I want to use a real heavy, like a wax thread, so that's what I've got. And I also want to make a shank on it. So the way I figure out where to place the button is I just let the, let the arm fall where it wants to fall. And then I go to the bottom buttonhole and spread the buttonhole open just a little bit and put a pin straight through the bottom of it straight through to the bib and this is where I'm going to stitch my button. So I'll take my, my thread, I have it all ready to go, place it right where that pin was. Now I know you all know how to sew on a button, but I don't know that you've ever sewed one on with a shank, so I will show you how to do that. It's a thread shank, so it lifts the button up a little bit off the bib so it's easier to get it in and out of the buttonhole. So I'm just taking a couple of anchor stitches, hold it in there really good first, and then here's my button. So I'll go through the button. So when we go through the second hole of the button, and back into the bib, we don't want to draw the button really close to the bib. So in your sewing machine, you usually have this funny little device. And I'm going to use it to make a button shank. So I'll place my button, or I'll place this button shank device, I'm going to call it, underneath my button and draw it tight to that shank. And you can see it's lifting the button up off the bib. That's all it's doing. And then once I get it into place, I can kind of hold it with my thumb. And then I'll continue to stitch my button on. And after I have it all stitched, I'll come back and show you how to make the shank. So I'm down to my last couple stitches. You can see how far my button is raised up off the bib. So I'll just go in and out. Come back up one more time. I find it easy to turn it and look at the back to get that needle lined up with the hole in the button. So now that I've got the, it stitched on quite a bit, I pull my little shank thing out, take it through the last hole of the button, but not through the bib. And now I'm going to just wrap it, the thread around the button a few times. And it creates like a thread shank to just hold it up off the edge of the bib. And then we'll pass it back through to the back. And you can see my button is raised up a little bit. So it'll be a lot easier to button it while it's on the baby. So we'll knot the back a few times. Bury my thread. And then we're finished. We can cut this. Button up the, the little button on the bib, and there she is. I think she's adorable. So this is Monster Face. Girl one, I'm sorry, this is three. 
this is Monster Face 2 and I did do an optional tie. You can do this instead of an arm. The instructions are in your uh, to make the tie are in your instruction sheet. So there's little girl number two and here's girl number one and then we have blank ones that you can make that have no uh, no monster face on it at all and you can go ahead and put names on there or another design or whatever you'd like you could do baby's first first Christmas any of the holidays so we have a blank for a boy and a girl then we have monster face boy one and I think this is boy two and this one has no chin on it you can do it without the chin or with the chin this one had the chin inside of his mouth is red and here's Monster Face Boy 3 and they all have, if you do the chin they do have a little pacifier hole it's kind of a cute little baby gift you could do, you could put the pacifier in there and give that as a gift nice maybe baby shower gift be lots of fun, hope you enjoy your monster bibs